for Krima Media's policy, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is researcher and analyst, Professor Raymond Satna, here to unpack his column titled, The EFF, The Judiciary and the Necessity to Still Be Freedom Fighters. You write as if the ANC is already dead, that there is a vacuum to be filled. Are you not jumping the gun, Raymond? Well, I don't say it's dead, but since you say it, the ANC is alive in the sense that it's got colors, it's got members, it's got leaders, but it's dead in the sense of being an organization that is vibrant with ideas. When I was involved in the ANC, people used to debate all the time. They used to be arguing. They used to, be, conferences weren't just about electing people or buying people for elections. Uh, buying branches. There was no such thing. What people were concerned about is if you vote for this person, what will it mean in terms of the direction of the ANC? What direction should it take? And we used to go, I was in political education, we used to go all over the country. And it was very interesting in the rural areas, many of these people couldn't read the documents, old people who were not literate, but teachers in the branch would read it for them so they knew what the constitution said, what the document said, and there was a lot of debate. That ANC doesn't exist anymore. If you look at the media today, they speculate, this one might get that position, this person might get this position. And the media itself, I believe, is colluding in making politics not about politics, but about personalities and who will be elected. That's not how a living organization exists as I knew the ANC. Uh, let me say it's closer to some of the Western democracies, but we didn't want that. And you say there is a need for an alternative to take the place of the ANC, but you offer no alternative. So where does this leave the readers? Well, you know, if you go to social media, people say, vote them out. But who have you got to take their place? There's no organization that really has the respect of um, a lot of sufficient people to vote out the ANC. And personally, I would not like to see these alternatives. What I think one has to do is build an alternative force outside parliament. Uh, I'm not saying recreate the UDF, but organizations like the UDF, popular organizations, faith-based organizations, bring in business because business was very involved in defending the constitution under Zuma and removing Zuma. Business must come forward again and people, workers who have traditionally been in an antagonistic relationship with business must recognize the need to work with business to restore constitutionalism and to restore democracy. Business has an interest in stability and business is more stable than most other organizations and has an interest in a democratic future under the constitution, obviously not as radical as some forces would want, but there is a basis, I think, for unity. And how important was the EFF attack on the judiciary it is the title of your article, but most of the article is about other matters. Yes, and it got me started because I thought it was very irresponsible. Uh, what's very interesting about South Africa is that suddenly the law and the judiciary has been a major force defending the rights of people. Now, I used to teach constitutional law during the day, but I used to undermine the apartheid constitution at night. That's why I went to jail. So I myself grew up with disrespect for the law, disrespect for the judiciary, disrespect for the constitution. So Julius Malima pointing to the white judge hanging Solomon Mahlangu is not relevant to the constitution today. The constitution today is not rights denying like the apartheid constitution, it's a bearer of rights. 
It's a transformative constitution which can be used to benefit the people of South Africa. And it's very irresponsible to attack the judges and claim that they are captured. Now, I'm not suggesting there are no racist judges. Certainly, some judges may be racist. However, if they do decide something on a racist basis, it goes on appeal and they will be brought to order either at the Supreme Court of Appeal or at the Constitutional Court. So that these days, a number of institutions that are not elected, like the previous public protector and the Auditor General, have been the line of defense for people, along with the judiciary, which has been a key force. And you refer to the notion of being a freedom fighter and a revolutionary with approval. Are you not being romantic or is it not misguided with the collapse of so many revolutions and the problems that Cuba faces? I believe that the word revolutionary doesn't necessarily mean violence, okay? To be a revolutionary in the time of apartheid meant that was necessary to take up arms because there was an armed war against the people of South Africa. So I agreed with, justified in, and was involved in the struggle, which included the use of arms against the apartheid regime. But in the present period, being a revolutionary, when you have a constitution that is transformative and potentially very emancipatory, it's important for revolutionaries and freedom fighters to, to support that. But the words, for me, suggest people with integrity, people who care about other people, people who have a sense of solidarity with the poor, who embody the pain of the poor as their own. And in my article, I refer to Che Guevara saying that it may sound uh, silly to people, but no revolutionary can be a revolutionary without a sense of love. And Fidel Castro says it is important to recognize that there is an affinity between the teachings of Jesus Christ and the teachings of communism, so that there's not an antagonistic relationship necessarily between being a revolutionary and religion, being a revolutionary and the ordinary values that we have as families, loving one another, things like that. So that was why I believe we must retrieve the notion of being a revolutionary and we must be freedom fighters today and we must ask ourselves, what does it mean? That was Professor Raymond Satna speaking to Criminal Media's Quality about the EFF, the judiciary, and the necessity to still be the freedom fighters.